why Egypt is building a new capital city. Egypt, a country that connects Northeast Africa and the Middle East, dates back to the Pharaoh's reign. The gigantic pyramids of Giza and the Great Sphinx, as well as Luxor's hieroglyph-lined Karnak Temple and Valley of the King's Tombs, are among the millennia-old monuments that border the rich Nile River Valley. Ottoman structures such as Mohammed Ali Mosque and the Egyptian Museum, a treasure mine of antiquities, may be found in Cairo, the capital. The new administrative capital is a large-scale project in Egypt to build a new capital city that has been in the works since 2015. On March 13, 2015, it was unveiled by Egypt's then-housing minister, Mostafa Madbouli, at the Egypt Economic Development Conference. The capital city is one of the economic development plans and projects, and it is part of a bigger initiative called Egypt Vision 2030. The name of Egypt's next capital has yet to be decided. On the website of the new capital, a competition to choose a new name and logo for the city was started. A jury of experts was constituted to assess the proposals submitted for inclusion in the list and to choose the best among them. The Egyptian government has yet to release any official results. Wedian City was the planned name for the city in the early stages of planning. Kamal al Wazir, Egypt's transportation minister, suggested the city's name might be Egypt in October 2021. Thank you for joining us. If you're new to Africa Reloaded, make sure to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and turn on the notification button to receive updates on new videos. Location of a new capital city. The proposed city will lie 4 to 5 kilometers east of Cairo, just beyond the second Greater Cairo Ring Road, and midway between Cairo and the maritime city of Suez. The city will, according to the plans, become Egypt's new administrative and financial capital, housing the country's principal government offices and ministries, as well as foreign embassies. It would have a population of 6.5 million people on a total area of 700 square kilometers, though that number might climb to 7 million. Plans for the city There will be 21 residential areas and 25 designated districts in the city. Its downtown will have skyscrapers such as the Oblisco Capitale, which will be created in the shape of a pharaonic obelisk and will rise to 1,000 meters, making it the world's highest building, and the iconic tower, which will be the tallest in Africa. A central park, artificial lakes, approximately 2,000 educational institutions, a technology and innovation park, 663 hospitals and clinics, 1,250 mosques and churches, a 90,000-seat stadium, 40,000 hotel rooms, a major theme park four times the size of Disneyland, 90 square kilometers of solar energy farms, an electric railway link with Cairo, and a new international airport at the site of the Egyptian Air Force's existing Wadi Al Jandali Airport are all planned for the city. Reasons why Egypt is building a new capital city Overcrowded nature of Cairo The existing capital is in a state of disarray. The city's roads are clogged by ministries and embassies surrounding Cairo's centerpiece Tahrir Square. Many streets are closed to guarantee the safety of these structures and their occupants, making it difficult to go from point A to point B in the city. Furthermore, the 22 million strong population of the already overburdened capital is set to treble by 2050. As a result, it's simple to see why the new administrative capital, which will eventually house embassies, government agencies, the parliament, 30 ministries, a spiraling presidential compound, and 6.5 million people, is a requirement. It appears that it will not only relocate governmental buildings, but also provide much-needed housing in Cairo. Build a new future for Cairo. The project aims to clean up Cairo's problems and pave a way for a brighter future. In June 2019, most government buildings, as well as those occupied by Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi, will be relocated. Businesses will be drawn to a central business zone with 20 Chinese built buildings, and foreign embassies will be urged to relocate. But once the new capital is established, what will happen to the old city? The president wants to make a statement. In June 2014, Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi was elected, 
and he advised the Egyptian people to prepare for the hard work period in their country's recent history in order to assist the economy recover from the repercussions of the 2011 revolution. The revolution took place in ancient Cairo, centered on Tahrir Square, which is now home to many of Cairo's administrative buildings. Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak, who served from 1981 to 2011, attempted to develop a new capital during his time in office, however the initiative failed. If Sisi succeeds in overcoming Egypt's previous setbacks and political tensions, as well as physically moving the government away from the ghosts of the revolution, it will demonstrate that he can overcome Egypt's previous setbacks and political tensions and move the country and, hopefully, its economy forward. The Egyptian government may not have to pay for it. The government has enlisted the help of a Dubai-based real estate investment fund led by Emirati Mohammed al Abar, the man behind the Burj Khalifa, to raise finance and construct the project. Around $12 billion had been offered by Gulf-based investors by the end of last week's conference, accounting for nearly a quarter of the total. Sisi has already cut food and energy subsidies and boosted fuel prices to improve the country's struggling economy, prompting some to criticize the launch of a massive new metropolis project when Egypt's poorest go hungry. It's been done before. However, it was not extremely successful. In 1999, sections of Malaysia's central government were relocated from Kuala Lumpur to the newly constructed Putrajaya, while in 2005, the Burmese government relocated from Yangon to the brand new city of Napida, though that city is reportedly still half empty. Egypt, on the other hand, has developed over 20 new towns in the last 50 years, the most of which are still thinly populated. President Sisi appears to have a big job on his hands, 